Creative Katie, Karen Birchill here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to actually end up doing two door hangers, two versions, because I simply could not make up my mind. And here is a sneak peek of one of them. These are intended to be hung on the doors of bedrooms or by the bedside. So I have applied a coat of white gesso to one side of this and black gesso to the background. And I'm coming in and I am trying to create kind of peacock colors. So I have light blue permanent and bright aqua and yellow green and dioxazine purple and I believe Prussian blue. Those are the colors. And I'm going to apply this with a makeup sponge. Now I put a coat of the gesso on here because I found that to apply it straight to the raw wood, I was using more paint. And that's one of the reasons <clears throat> it's good to put gesso. It prepares the surface so you actually end up not using as much paint. It also makes the paint go on smoother and adds a little bit of textural balance on here. Now, one of the challenges of doing the door hangers is it's a relatively small space. So whether you're doing an iCAD or an ATC, you're not going to end up seeing a lot of the background. So you don't need to throw every technique into a background of a small piece. Sometimes that's where we need to edit ourselves. And here I'm just etching with the darkest color, which is my Prussian blue. And that's just framing the product. Now again, you can do this on a art journal page, on an ATC. This is a, I believe it's a Stampendous stamp and I'll put a link to it in the description box below as long as well as the link to some door hangers if you want to start doing your art and have it usable art. And I'm stamping with archival ink into the background. I just want a hint of these peacock feathers in the background. And I'm just having that coverage. As an alternative, I was thinking I might do it later and stamp with gold acrylic paint. And that would have given a different effect. But I have a different plan and you're going to see where I'm going to go with this. So this is Peacock Feathers. It is a stencil by the Crafters Workshop by Balzer Designs. And as you can see, it is one of my well-loved, well-used stencils. I have this in both the 12 by 12 and the 6 by 6. And I owned this long before I was a brand ambassador for the Crafters Workshop. I've always loved their products. I'm just using the masking tape here to mask off where I don't want modeling paste to go. Now I was debating whether to use black modeling paste or the champagne gold modeling paste. And I decided for this one, I'm going with bling. And I'm using the champagne gold modeling paste. And you can get a kit of their metallic modeling pastes, kind of a sample one in these little containers, which is great. I mean, one, they last a long time, and two, then you get to try out each one. And then if you there is one that you absolutely love, you can purchase a larger jar of it. But I'm, I love their modeling pastes. I wish they were a little more accessible in Canada. So I put the modeling paste through, and as with modeling paste, you need to clean that off your stencil ASAP. So I have another door hanger here, and is this one's gessoed. And I decide that I'm going to apply the stamp before I put paint on. Now I think I'm gonna get a little carried away. So I'm not sure you see much of this, but you'll see where we go. And I'm just giving this a quick dry before I apply any wet medium. 
Archival ink is permanent, but it does need to be dry or it will smear. So with this one, I want to go in with some warm colors. So I have yellow and orange and uh, alizarin crimson, I believe, or magenta. And I'm mixing it. Non-peacock colors, but I want that stark contrast because I want to use that black modeling paste. And I love how that pops off of these sunset inspired colors. Now I admit here that I got a little carried away with the paint. So you can't see a lot of the peacock feather stamp from below behind. And it got a little more blended than I intended. Now I could have let this dry and put another coat and had it less blended. So when I saw that it was, I could no longer see the background, the stamping, I wet it a little bit and I thought, okay, I'm going to do the plastic wrap technique. So I thinned it out a little bit with water so it kind of becomes a little more fluid. And I grabbed the plastic wrap. I just wanted a little more yellow here. I wasn't happy with the too much blending. And I just crinkle this up to add the texture and with hopes that more of the feathers stamping is going to show. So I give that a, you know, about 10 minutes to dry and then I pull it off. And as long as the the paint doesn't flow back into itself, it's good. So now I set that aside to dry completely and I'm working on the first door hanger. So I grab my letter stamps and I'm stamping with black acrylic paint. I've spread it out thin on my craft glass media mat here and I am stamping. Now I'm not a t going, I'm not really trying to make this perfectly straight because I know that's not going to happen. I want it bold and dark, which is why I'm using the black acrylic paint instead of the archival ink. I find I get a better, better coverage if I use, if I stamp with acrylic paint. And then I am wiping off the acrylic paint off of the stamp off camera. Also with this, I can easily touch up with the acrylic paint if I need to, but this time I didn't need to. So the other door hanger is now dry. And I am using the black modeling paste here. And I've just kind of tapped it, taped it down just to hold it in place. And I'm using the silicone brush to apply the modeling paste. And it works rather well. It's a, it's a I think, two inch. And the black modeling paste, it just goes on like butter. Oh my gosh, it's so nice, like icing. It's just... The, the consistency, the thickness of it. And then I pull it off and I love the contrast. And you can see that you can see the feathers that I stamped on there. And I like how I put these feathers kind of around the circle of the door hanger. And so it looks like a dream catcher. That's where I was, that's part of my idea in making this. Now, if you weren't doing this on a door hanger, you can stencil something, a circle up there. You can put a gel print that's a circle so that it takes the place of the circle of the dream catcher. Now, some of the, there was a little too much white showing. So I am thinning down the paint and kind of making, I'm not sure if glaze is the correct term, a wash. And I'm colorizing and adding where I just need a little more color. 
and then I'm stamping with a piece of plastic wrap just to get get that texture in because I didn't want to lose all of that. In the pictures, this shows up mo looking more red. It is very coral color based. And then I wanted to splatter with gold. And I just have some gold paint. I've been doing a lot of gold splattering, so I have mixed up and thinned out the paint in that little container. So there is the splattering, and it just adds that little bit of extra something, right? I'm touching up. There was a splatter there that was a little too, too big or wasn't nice. Got to add. A, I thought, oh, I'm going to add a little bit of gold to this one. And I usually use my fan brush to splatter. I find that it works, but this fan brush is fairly loose. It isn't solid, so it's perfect for splattering. And I love how that turned out. And I think that gold is really going, I know from previous experience, that gold is going to really pop when I put a, a layer of my polycrylic varnish on. And I'm cutting out the words on this one. Picking a font that I think goes well with this. So again, dream big. And I have the black that coincides with the black of the feathers, so it all works together. And I'm just gluing this down with some gel medium in the matte finish. Thank you so much if you are a subscriber to my channel. If you aren't, please hit that subscribe button. If you are, beside the subscribe button, there is a bell. If you click on that, you will be notified. You will get a email or whatever you select that tells you when I've uploaded new videos. And then you can look at the preview and decide if that's something you want to watch. So I'm outlining this with a Sakura glaze pan. It is adds a little bit of dimension. It's a very opaque black and it's shiny when dry. And I like the boldness of it and it goes on so, so, so easily. And for smaller, smaller things like this door hanger, like ATCs or iCADs, it's just a little easier than the fine line bottle. But I still love my fine line bottles. In fact, I'm going to order some that are finer. They have come in two different sizes, so I'm going to experiment with the um, finer side. And here I'm outlining again. I just wanted to add a little bit more black because the word is in black and it just seemed to need a little something. I also ended up using the makeup sponge and black paint and just kind of shading around or, or edging as well. I've got close-ups of the finished projects. Thank you so much if you're interested in purchasing. Give me an email at creativekatie at gmail.com.